Admission is about the stories behind events, so what I want to do today is share some stories that I've experienced over the past couple years um, and bring to get forward some values that I really see resonate the way Shopify does events, um, and also tell you a bit what, about what Shopify is, <laughs> so for those who don't know. Um, but I do want to start with a story. Um, and this goes back to April 21st, uh, 2017. Uh, actually, the event started on April 20th. Um, but this was our second product conference, uh, Shopify Unite, uh, where we brought together our partners and developers from all across the world to San Francisco, which was a foreign city to us because we were based in Ottawa, Canada. Um, and it was a conference for us to do some product launches and explore a bit about the Shopify opportunity and get some feedback from our partners about their experience using the platform. Um, and the first day was an amazing, amazing hit. We had amazing keynotes and we had a couple panels and we had this amazing after party at uh, San Francisco City Hall with green lights, not blue lights. And people actually thought, because it was 420, that we were celebrating. <laughs> so, <laughs> so gotta like, yeah, put those two together. But it ended up, it was a great after party. Um, and so the next day we were ready to go back into some content and do some, uh, some talks and some panels. And we get to the venue and something doesn't feel quite right and we've been told that there's a citywide power outage. I'm sure all of you being event organizers know that there are so many things that you can control or you have backup plans for, but when it comes to a citywide power outage and all venues across town uh, and all generators are on hold because of all the calls getting in, uh, we, didn't, we weren't really sure what to do. Uh, so we took the moment to try and frantically figure things out, but while we were all getting together what we could for the rest of the afternoon, something kind of magical happened and people just stayed and started talking to each other. Um, and they started conversations and they started asking me, oh, I was trying to meet this person, where can I find them? And this like unplanned, authentic ecosystem just kind of formed and it was one of the most amazing experiences I can ever remember. Uh, we even had presenters that were planning on speaking that day do pop-up talks at different areas and you were kind of hearing like hush hush of like go over here to see the demo of the new product we're launching or all this other stuff so this was kind of my second big event that we had done with Shopify and I just it really showed like the power of people and the power that you don't necessarily you come to an event for an experience but that that experience goes beyond anything that VR could even give you necessarily and that it's really about the people you're connecting with uh, we had no complaints we had no ask for a refund so people came and they got what they were looking out of it and I think this really goes to show uh, something about like the art of gathering and how we sometimes focus too much on conventional gatherings and the way we gather around conferences or around meetups um, but that in an unconventional way it's the human interaction at the end of the day that resonates with us the most um, so me, I'm Caitlin, hi, I work for Shopify on our partner program uh, under the community team um, and I'm a person who believes in the power of face-to-face -face connections. Um, I'm actually here kind of because of people power. Um, my lead and one of my mentors at Shopify, Kier, uh, met Doc at a conference um, and uh, Kier also knows everyone in the industry. So if you don't know Kier, you should. He knows everyone. And um, I think it's amazing because he's also someone who cares a, a lot about going to these events and making these connections and, and building your network in an authentic way. And he gave me a lot of great advice about this talk as well, which I want to share with you. Um, so I hope you can see that. OK, it's very bright. Um, so I'm going to share a couple more stories. Uh, but essentially, I've kind of been thinking about the way that we, like, people interact at events, um, and especially the way that Shopify puts on events, and around these, val these values, these three values of building trust, friendly leverage, and feedback, um, and how we as a company kind of uh, explore this. So trust is a huge part of, um, of our platform and our product. Um, and how do you build trust with an audience, essentially? Um, and how can you build trust with early adapters who can then move it forward and express that to other people? Um, we preach our mission statement, make commerce better for everyone, but I think we as a company use events to um, send that message to a larger audience. So uh, Paul quickly mentioned Toby Luke, who's our CEO. So he coined this analogy about the trust battery. Um, and the concept is, and it's not an unfamiliar concept, but it's a way that he's able to um, 
visualize it for us is that as a you get when you join Shopify as a company as an employee your trust battery is charged at 50% which means that you come in with expectations and you have come in because you've been brought you've been given a promise of like a role or responsibility you're gonna have um, and the more that those promises are delivered on the higher your trust battery builds uh, with the company and with the people around you and I think the same can be said for events when you buy a ticket to an event or you have an attendee coming to an event they have an expectation their trust battery is at about 50%. Uh, so how are you able to deliver on those promises and give them what they ask for? Which essentially boils down to like, what is it that your employee, that your that your attendees are looking for? Um, but then you as the organizer need to deliver on that. So one way that I think we do it really well in our events is by creating authentic touch points. Um, and we do this through office hours. At every conference we host, we open up the floor to office hours, which is one-on-one -on -one time with Shopify employees to connect with our partners, with our merchants, um, to discuss major pain points and issues they're having on the platform that could probably be solved through a quick conversation. Um, we also build workshops and masterclass content with tangible takeaways uh, to help people 10x their businesses um, and really feel like they got value out of, uh, out of their experience. And people then feel like we invested in their success because uh, we're there to literally walk them, walk them through it. And it leads to larger company games for us as well. Um, which, without trust, you can't have something called friendly leverage. And again, I have to give Kier credit for this. <laughs> when I was going through my talk, he was like it's, like, it's like you're saying this, but you're really not saying it well enough. So he helped me explain to me that it's this concept of how high trust uh, communities and attendees can create friendly leverage. Um, and how Shopify uses this for serving a commercial need through authenticity. Um, and I'll get into this a little bit more when I speak about the Meetup program, which I've been running for the past year and a bit. Um, and we talk about, like, Shopify invests in the product and the channel, um, but we don't, like, for our Meetup community specifically, it's more of a friendly leverage opportunity where the investment is in the people and investing in their relationships with them rather than it is an actual financial investment. Um, so I want to use an example of, a con I wouldn't even call them a company, but a concept that really resonates with me and I think is doing an amazing job of this. Uh, so Creative Mornings, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, is a breakfast lecture series for the creative community. And the concept of the creative community is that everyone is creative. And I think they're a, a concept that's really doing it right when it comes to friendly leverage. Uh, they're not a product focus, they're a concept focus group um, and the, being that everyone is creative uh, but they still are able to get massive uh, funding from companies all around the world like WordPress and MailChimp and Adobe to sponsor their their events because um, those companies align with their vision and trust that the people that they're bringing out to these are the right audience for them. So it just makes sense for them to share those stories. And Creative Mornings is in over 180 cities um, in 60 countries, and it's completely volunteer run. And I volunteer for the chapter in Ottawa, and it's helped me better understand why people come to events and what people get out of them. And that how, and Tina Roth Eisenberg, who's literally right here, and you can see me way up over here somewhere in the purple tutu. Um, she, coined, she was the when she started this summit that we just went to um, last month, the first thing she said is, I believe in the power of face-to-face -face connections. And I think that's something that we often forget while we're behind the scenes planning the logistics and everything, but it really boils down to the importance of people. Um, Another amazing thing that a lot of these chapters have been able to do is using them as a channel for change. So while we believe that everyone is creative, creative people really believe in the power, the, the power of the community they can build through change. So in Miami, they actually had all women speakers for a year. Uh, at all of their events. And then they also, in St. Pete's, Florida, they also did, they have completely sustainable events. So they focus around ways that they can use this community and this, of this space and the people around it to foster some really amazing movements and change. Um, so going it back to what Shopify has been doing to use friendly leverage, um, uh, specifically is our Shopify meetups series. So. I told you the story about Unite earlier. So that after the first Unite, we started talking to a lot of our partners who, I guess I didn't define, probably define a partner for you, but our partners are agencies, designers, developers, freelancers, anyone who works with Shopify merchants to help them be more successful. They could be marketers, branding agencies. Uh, so they're 
all around the world. Um, and we also, an elevated part of our partner program is our expert program, which is our brand ambassadors, a part of that. Um, so they were the ones that were attending Unite. And we got to talk to them and the, like the, the things they were saying was that they really wanted to host their own events or their own mini conferences and to get people together because we can be stuck behind a screen so often we forget what, what brings us, what makes us a community. Um, so we started offering official support for these meetup events um, in the form of a small financial investment, some marketing, and some branding and content resources. Um, and this year alone, we've had over 137 meetups hosted by partners uh, in 24 countries and 76 cities. There's one happening right now. Actually, I think it's like just ending in Essen, Germany. Um, so that's pretty cool. And this one right here that's pictured is the first one that they did in Bangalore, India, uh, hosted by Push Owl uh, in the WeWork Galaxy space in Bangalore. Um, and this was on September 1st, and they had over 200, 142 people. Um, I think they had over 200 that registered, but our meetups are completely free, so uh, you can sometimes expect a bit of a lesser than expected turnout, but I think this is still a pretty full house, which is really amazing. Um, and it's this concept of friendly leverage that, like, why would this partner even be interested in, in putting time and energy into an event if we're not giving them that much financial incentive? It's really not enough to, like, cover the complete cost of the event. But the thing is, they're so tied and trusted to our brand and our messaging, and they understand that the community has a really shared value, that they take that, that it's mutually beneficial for us to invest a little bit in them and give them some help, but then also for them to align with us as a brand and as a company with what we're doing. Um, Another couple of other examples of this happening that have happened over the last year is we have a partner in Vancouver who runs his own conference uh, around Shopify uh, called Launch, and it's specifically for Shopify and e-commerce store owners to get them together and help them understand how they can build a business um, and build a successful business and scale it um, and build an empire. Essentially, they've had some really cool speakers and really cool agencies come in uh, to help them facilitate that, and it's been really neat to see how that's grown. Uh, this was their second you're doing it. Um, and uh, one of our app developers, Recharge in Los Angeles, is holding their first Recur LA conference for e-commerce subscriptions. Um, and it's interesting because, yeah, we, they, they've, they want to like bring the Shopify people out together, and I think that's really cool. Um, we gift our hosts with the autonomy to make the decisions on the content uh, because they're the local expert. And while uh, we do want to keep a brand in consistency. I think there's a great value to relying on the local expert in that area. Um, and we're doing this actually with our Pursuit Conference Series right now where I'm helping each stop along the way. We've got five stops. Um, connect with the local partner to run an event with us that's targeted to the partners but as well as the merchants to get them together to learn from each other and support each other in a non-salesy way. <laughs> So at the end of the day, back to Unite and like what this means for us and for our, all the events that go on around us, is that we're a product company and we do put events on for a commercial reason, but the difference is that it's genuine and it's using that concept of the friendly leverage for us to be able to partner with people and work on it together, but towards a commercial goal, but that it's mutually beneficial. Um, my other point that I wanted to bring up is about feedback. Um, we ha have a very strong value at Shopify that feedback is a gift. Um, I worked at Apple for a short period of time where we talked about fearless feedback, uh, which I'll get into slightly in a bit. Um, and I think the thing that we need to do more as event organizers is understand the, the gift of feedback. Um, and a story I want to share specifically about feedback uh, is one that did happen at the Creative Morning Summit that I was at about a month ago. This is Priya Parker. Uh, she's amazing. <laughs> I have no other ways to describe her. Um, so she is a conflict resolution like specialist, and she also focuses on the power of gathering. And she just wrote a book called The Art of Gathering. But she did a session with us, with uh, over like 150 of us in this giant room together. And she set this format where she had pulled like a small group of us based on the fact that we had all flown out, uh, flown out to the event into a smaller group. And she had asked us to go around the, the circle and say our name and where we're from. And we started doing it and about five people in, you realize there was like 50 people in this circle, so it was gonna keep going. But she asked us if we wanted to continue and we'd all just said like, 
sure, we'll continue, why not? Um, but then one guy actually did put up his hand and said, no, I'm not interested in continuing. And she asked why. And he said, because there's many other ways to get to know someone than beyond their name. Uh, and that actually shifted the entire feedback in the circle that we didn't, no one wanted to continue anymore. Because we were meeting in this conventional way. We've all done it. We've all been in that circle at that meeting where everyone's like, go around the room and say something about yourself. But the power that he brought to it was that he gave that feedback that he thought it wasn't a good use of our time and shifted our entire convention, the conventional way that we were thinking about meeting. And she did this for about like an hour and a half with us and like broke us off into different groups. And it was a really amazing experience where you think about how like, well, we do meet in conventional ways. It's the unconventional ways that we're able to provide that honest feedback with each other. Um, and I think the important thing to take away from this too is that she created a space for fearless feedback. Um, and I think we all, you're never going to get that proper feedback without creating a safe space for it and, and asking for it. <laughs> um, so yes. Uh, I wanted to share some feedback that we've received from some of our meetups. Um, when I asked the hosts uh, who are all around the world why they host meetups, um, some of them said, to grow our network of resources, to inspire and be inspired uh, by new merchants and partners, to build authority for our brand, to have fun, to help create the path that leads to more entrepreneurs. And I loved this last line here because that's like a direct quote from like our brand values, uh, is to create the path that leads to more entrepreneurs and make commerce better for everyone. Uh, so it's amazing to see that our partners trust and understand our brand enough, uh, that they understand that you, through friendly leverage and through hosting these events, um, they're able to align with us, but then we're also able to get back from them that amazing like community building that is so important to our product. Uh, to bring us all together, merchants, pros, experts, and everyone in between to share, learn together, and create a community. And I think this is so important too because so many of us do such targeted events as well that sometimes it can be nice to open up a space and I think meetups are a great format for this, for it to be open to anyone. Um, we had someone uh, show up at our conference last week that was for partners that was a merchant and she was almost in tears at me with registration because she didn't understand that the event wasn't for her. And I found a meetup happening in New York in a month that she's able to go to instead. So I think it's important to have this entry level shared space and these grassroots opportunities and I think Shopify understands that those are still just as important as those next level targeted events that people to 10x their business in the specific niche that they're in. So they work together um, but they also are important to have both options for people. Um, and because the partner community is one of the things I love the most about Shopify. Consistently when I talk to people about our product and about like why it is they're, they're using us or they enjoy us, it's about the support and the community. And I think we all use the word community so often to talk about like our audience or our attendees. Um, but it really is like, it's, it's such an amazing concept that it can, that what it creates uh, can provide that feedback. Um, and, uh, and those opportunities, and that you can meet people at a conference that will then bring you out to speak at a conference <laughs> very later. So just to recap, um, build trust. Building trust and those early adopters of whether it's a product or a concept that you are gathering about will move it forward. And understand that you're not going to cast the largest net with your first you're going to cast a large net, but you're going to get maybe not as many fish as you had hoped. Um, but you need to understand that like, you will find your people, and those people will tell other people about what they gathered about and why it's important. Friendly leverage. Your brand advocates can do the work of 10 times marketers. Like The fact that our Shopify meetup ecosystem is so global is insane. We don't have offices in, in 68 cities around the world, but we have partners who are helping connect our merchants and the people that are using our product with each other, and that is super powerful. Uh, feedback. Your biggest advocates provide the best feedback. So by building trust, friendly leverage, and getting people out to talk face to face about what they're experiencing and their common problems, um, you are going to get the best feedback about the product and where things are really missing, or even the best feedback about your concept or your idea um, and what's missing from it and what you need to focus on next. So to recap, Shopify is a product company that has a vested interest in events 
And we specifically do believe that events don't have to be a high investment necessarily. We're not going to have a million Unites throughout the year. We do it once a year and it's a lot of work. <laughs> and it's a really great return and you get to meet amazing people. But the grassroots events are just as important as this because without them, we wouldn't have the turnout we do every year. Um, so that's it. I think I'm like way under time. <laughs> I think I talked really fast. Um, you, I think you can see a link there, but um, I have uh, some resources and stuff there that I've written up about this topic. Um, just caitlin.teed forward slash admission 2018 if you can't see it. Um, my Instagram and contact information is there as well uh, to discuss more. But I'm really looking forward to sharing some authentic touch points with you all later over a drink. Um, I also welcome your feedback. It's a gift. This is my first conference talk, so I really appreciate it. Um, I'm very nervous, if you couldn't tell. Uh, but I want to say bye for now, but I hope through the people power we are all able to see each other and gather again sometime soon. So thank you. <laughs>